Chapter 26. Characteristics of Late Romantic Harmony. The harmonic sonorities and contexts we have studied in the last several chapters were used to great effect by composers in the Romantic era in their quest for increasingly varied and profound chromaticism. As composers expanded the traditional forms and explored both literary and nationalistic influences, they became extraordinarily adventurous in their harmonic vocabulary. This exploration often resulted in non-traditional harmonic relationships, daring modulations, and the beginnings of a disconnect between traditional harmony and melody, sometimes to the point of tonal ambiguity and obscuration. In this chapter, we will explore five traits of late romantic harmony and progression and specific examples from representative composers as summarized here. One, harmony that results from linear contrapuntal processes rather than vertically functional progression. Two, melodic writing that places great emphasis on non-harmonic tones on metrically strong locations. Three, avoidance of the dominant tetonic progression, that is, use of dominant chords that do not resolve in the expected functional manner. Four, avoidance of a clear sense of key area. Five, rapid modulations to a succession of key areas. Six, modulation to remote areas, often by means of enharmonic relationships. And seven, use of the chromatic mediant third relationship rather than progression by fifths. First, harmony that results from linear contrapuntal processes rather than a vertically functioning progression. In the mazurka and F-sharp minor, example 21.6, Chopin employs linear motion in four voices to create an astonishing harmonic progression that defies Roman numeral analysis. In this excerpt, an analysis is given underneath, but the sequential passage that begins in measure five presents a complicated journey through several transient key areas. After a gesture to the parallel major A in measures two to three, Chopin seems to pass through, yet never resolve to, a descending pattern of key areas, C sharp minor, B minor, A major, G minor, and then finally by measure 9, the music returns to the original key of F sharp minor. While interesting to consider, the Roman numeral analysis is somewhat less helpful in understanding the passage than this linear reduction. If you follow any one of the voices in this chart, you will find a long chromatic descending line moving from the three chord to the five seven chord and then on to the tonic of F sharp minor. It is the ingenious way that Chopin staggers the pitches of these descending chromatic scales that creates the fascinating sequential harmony of the passage. Next, melodic writing that places great emphasis on non-harmonic tones on metrically strong locations. In the Adagietto movement of Symphony No. 5, Mahler presents us with an impressive example of late romantic melodic writing that involves extensive use of added tones and non-chord tones. When a composer is consistent in his or her use of such dissonances, 
The effect is a melody that is somewhat independent and removed from harmony. Examine the first beats of measures 3, 4, 6, 7, and 8 to find examples of strong beat dissonances that predominate through this melody. Take a look at this example. The E natural was preserved from the previous measure where it was a chord tone. Here as a non-chord tone, it resolves upward to the chord tone on the next beat. This is called a retardation, which is the same as a suspension except that the resolution goes up. A very interesting strong beat dissonance. Followed on the very next measure, by another strong beat dissonance, the A, preserved from the previous measure, now appears as a non-chord tone and resolves downward, a typical suspension. But this suspension is accompanied by an F, which is also suspended from the previous measure, and a D, which is kind of like a color tone, like a ninth of the chord. Both the F and the D are frozen in fact, the F never seems to resolve. That's the nature of a frozen non-chord tone. You should take a moment to look at the similar strong beat dissonances in measure 5, 6, 7, and 8. Measure 5 has an accented neighbor tone on the third beat. Look at the suspension on the first beat of measure 6, another suspension on the first beat of measure 7, and another retardation on the first beat of measure 8. It is the emphasis on such dissonance that gives much melody from the Romantic era, its particular expressive character. Other interesting harmonic features in this example include the use of dominant chords built up to the ninth, that is in measures four and seven. As well as dominant chords with the added sixth measures 2, 7, and 10. The added 6 on the 5, 7 of 2 in measure 7 is a particularly interesting example. On this secondary dominant 7, Mahler included both the minor 9th, E flat, and the minor 6th, B flat, intervals as frozen non-chord tones as he leads into the 2 harmony in measure 8, G, B flat, D. One additional example of a kind of frozen dissonance is found in measures 9 and 10. In this daring use of the suspension, Mahler retains the pitch F for measure 8 as he moves into the dominant chord in measure 9. The F stays in the harmony until measure 10 when the melody, that is the main melody, returns and resolves into a leading tone, but not until the very last beat.